Hey guys, uh, this is a quick little video that I wanted to do about this new awesome service from Arrow Video. So Arrow, they've started this new service. It's Arrow Player. And basically, uh, I know they used to, ha they or they have a streaming service for the UK, but now uh, there is a streaming service for us in the US and Canada. So North America, yay, we get, so get something this year. Uh, and basically it's just a streaming service like any other. I don't really know how to specifically explain that so let's let's dig in I'm just gonna do a quick um, screen capture of the service let you know about it and then afterward I will do a little review of the first feature-length film that I watched on the service crystal eyes uh, yeah let's dig in all right so this is yeah this is the page uh, it looks a lot like shutter uh, which you know I think most streaming services are kind of going towards a certain uh, aesthetics so that's not surprising also it is the the main competition uh, I don't feel like this is like I I, I think I made a joke somewhere or another uh, that Arrow was gunning for Shutter, and I don't think that's necessarily the case I think they're just you know trying to get in on the streaming game because that's what's really popular and you know boutique boutique blu-rays are boutique so you know there's a it's a niche audience um, so I already have a trial that I started you can start a trial uh, it's 30 days for free which is awesome this is the perfect time to start that uh, so good on arrows marketing team for coming up with that idea um, so I already started mine so let's go to browse and right off the bat so you can see um, they're doing Shocktober 31 which they're doing 31 movies uh, one a day that they're premiering uh, all throughout October again great idea um, I'm not too crazy about the choices for the third shocktober uh, where is it <laughs> uh shocktober 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 there we go uh, i'm not too crazy about them just because they're all movies i've seen multiple times so far um that's not necessarily you know that's not a bad thing that's just i i have less interest in personally watching them um because they're movies that again I've seen a fuckload of times. Um, I might, you know, rewatch Audition. I've been thinking about that. I do have the book that I've been meaning to finish reading, so um, that'd be a cool thing. But overall, not too exciting from my perspective, but I think if you're just a fan of horror movies and you just want, like, a cool gimmick, uh, Shocktober is a pretty cool gimmick, and I'm very excited to see what they do moving forward. I don't know if they, done, they did this with their previous or their, their other streaming service, their UK streaming service, um, but because I'd never had access to that. Just looking at it as something new to me, pretty cool. So already we're starting off strong. When you go down, uh, you can see you have your continue watching, you have your list, I'll get back to that in a second, and then there are the various playlists that they've come up with. Uh, this is just like most others, this is like Shutter, like Criterion Channel, any streaming service has these. So you got your feature presentations, which I if you go to view all and see you can kind of scroll through these show more scroll through and then it ends and these are not all of the feature length movies i don't quite know why they have it set up like this if you go to just any old one i thought maybe it was because these are the ones with like special features available but i'm not seeing that here so that's not the case i don't know why they have a limited number of feature presentations. This is my one big flaw so far is, as far as I can tell, uh, there's no straightforward way of just looking at everything that's available all at once. And I don't like that as much. I wish there was just an all option. That would make me a lot happier. But anyway, so that's feature presentations. That's just, I guess, the movies that are feature length that they want you to watch. Then we got Edgar Wright Selects. This is another great, just straight out of the gate marketing push. If you can hear my son crying in the background, that's because he pooped, apparently, and he's having a very bad time with that. I apologize. <laughs> uh, he, he, he gets real mad when he poops. Um, so this is Edgar Wright Selects, again, as you can see, an interesting mix. Uh, for me, uh, I have not watched uh, these three guys. I know I still haven't watched Psychomania. That's one of those, like, it's, it's, the imagery is burned into my brain, but I've never actually watched the whole movie. Uh, but Inferno, I've heard great things about. I've never even heard of Les Plaisirs. Uh, Plaza? Plaza? Maybe? I'm actually going to add that to my list. I didn't see that before. Did I add this already? I did not. Look at that. That's crazy. So then, like, uh, Death Walks on High Heels. That's a great one. Uh, Deep Red, Don't Torture a Duckling. Uh, Text Chainsaw Massacre, of course. Death Walks at Midnight. Torso. Fucking Sergio Martino's Torso. The Fifth Chord, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal giallo. Uh, the Crazies, George Maros, The Crazies, Schlock by John Landis. So, you know, a few, a few mildly deep cuts. These are, for most people, pretty deep cuts. 
then the rest are, you know, if you're just a kind of, a, I don't know how to put this, standard issue horror fan, like you don't really dig too deep, there's a lot of good deep cuts here that I think you'll really enjoy. So that's pretty dope. Of course, you have your hell raises, you got your auditions, you got your reanimators, stuff that's bound to be there no matter what. So let's see here. Um, so Edgar Wright, and then let's see, we got the Herschel Gordon Lewis Feast. This is basically everything, I think, from the Herschel Gordon Lewis collection. I don't know if I'm missing anything here. I feel like I'm not, but I could be. If you go to view all, you can see that uh, it's a pretty hefty number of movies and with uh, a bunch of the special features from the uh, release. So that's another great thing. It's kind of like Criterion. They have a lot of special features from their um, disc releases for people who subscribe to the uh, streaming channel to go ahead and peruse through. I think that's also aggressively dope. Arrow Essentials, Slashers, this is a lot like some, Shudder does this, basically the same thing. Um, but a bunch of slashers, uh, some interesting choices in there. I've never seen Colobos. I added that to my watch list already. I'm very curious. Um, of course, I already saw Crystal Eyes. Let's see, New Cults. Um, now this one actually I really love because uh, these are several of these are movies that I was thinking about buying and I just wasn't sure about. So like Zombie for Sale, The Deeper You Dig uh, are notable ones. Uh, Lake Michigan Monster. Uh, I missed the premiere thing for that, so I'm, I'm very curious to check that out. The Dead Center, Jesus Shows You the Way to the Highway, um, you know, of course Video Man and Crumbs are here. A bunch of great stuff that I'm really excited to dig into this month. Let's see, Tooled Up, of course, again, they have like these specific categories like Shudder. So Tooled Up, Driller Killer, Audition, uh, which is cute, uh, Microwave Massacre, you know, um, Doom Asylum, which I very highly recommend. I just did a video recommending that. Uh, so, you know, a bunch of cool stuff. Scalpel, really excited to check out Scalpel. Haunted, so, you know, ghost stuff and witches and what have you. So, you know, if you are uh, uncertain about any, like One Missed Call, the Ringu films, you know, Dream Demon, a bunch of these that if you're not sure about buying them, you can check them out here first. And that is fantastic. I, I, I really love that basically this creates a try before you buy uh, service for very cheap. So Arrow Stories, these are just like little documentaries about various movies, uh, some of which are very intriguing to me and I can't wait to watch. Some of them I already own because they're on disc. Uh, Midnight Movies, another great one. I've never actually seen The Swinging Cheerleaders, so I'm very excited to watch that. I know I'm, I keep saying I'm very excited, it's only because I am very excited. Uh, Inferno of Torture, La Grande Buffet, uh, Evil Ed, a bunch of Midnight Movies. Uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man, Warning from Space, Sister Street Fighter, just a bunch of good shit that I, you know, would be maybe uncertain. Did I already add that? Yeah. Um, about buying. So, really cool. I'm really glad that they have these Jose Lares films because I was very uncertain about buying that. So, I can now check them out first. Dope as hell. They have a bunch of trailers, which, of course, Arrow's trailers are next to none. Um, Gamera, the complete collection, which I already, I already own, but that's, you know, whatever. Um, that's good that people can check those out if they don't want to buy the big set for a lot of money. And that's about it. So um, here we come to, again, the issue I don't see, and please, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see an option to just look at everything. And that makes me a little frustrated, but that's honestly like the worst, the worst I can come up with is that I don't see how to do that. Um, and that's, that's not a bad thing at all. So I did have my list here. And if we go to view all, blah, 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 blah. Um, so as you can see, I have a bunch of movies in my um, watch list. These are all movies that basically anything that I saw that I was like, I really want to watch that, uh, I, I put it in here. And so I wound up with, let's see, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 43 movies. I wound up with 43 movies that I want to watch in my watch list. That's pretty wild. Like, that is a fuckload of movies. Um, so, and that's, I mean, we still have Shocktober going on, so that means they have uh, 28 movies left to go through for Shocktober, so there could be some surprises in there where I'm like, well, gotta watch that. Um, and my understanding is that they're all things that are not on the service yet, so um, that's potentially 20 plus movies more to add to my watch list this month. That is uh, stellar 
That's absolutely stellar. Now I did check two other versions of this service. Uh, I checked the Roku version and I checked the um, iPhone app version. So there is an app for the iPhone and for Roku. For the phone, I didn't watch like a lot with it because that's lame, but um, I did try it out and it worked fine. I didn't have any issues. It's very similar to the desktop version. So, you know, it's basically just a direct port of that. The Roku version, the only issue I really had with the Roku version uh, was that there was no option for subtitles, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially because all you have to do is you press a little asterisk, a little butthole uh, on the Roku remote, and it'll bring up your little side menu and you just turn captions on. Uh, I don't love messing with my captions options on Roku, so it wasn't really my ideal solution, but that, that's okay. Um, it's, you know, it's a way to do it. I do wish there was an option to just pick subtitles, but, you know, that's that's a, a very minor problem to have. And you don't have to go searching, you know, you just do, boop, click the butthole, and boop, click, click uh, captions on, and you're good. So um, I love those as well. I'm very excited about this. Uh, let's dig into Crystal Eyes real quick, just to wrap this up. So Crystal Eyes, it's a 2017 film uh, shot and based in Buenos Aires. And uh, so it's another South American uh, giallo pastiche film, which uh, I don't know what it is about South Americans and giallo films, but uh, here we are. Uh, this is, uh, I would actually say, you know, it, it of course reminded me of Abracadabra because it, both are stylized, both shot um, in the same region. Uh, and I really, got, I, I enjoy this much more. It feels less constrained by its genre than Abracadabra did. Uh, it does have a very interesting take and a take that I think might turn some people off, but, uh, you know, that's up to you. Uh, the plot itself, the plot itself follows uh, this... Uh, group of people uh, who are in the modeling industry in Buenos Aires in the 1980s and uh, the like the 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 big the big bad bitch of the whole industry is Alexis Carpenter and Alexis Carpenter uh, she is very full of herself and in the opening moments she is a real cunt to a lot of people and then uh, I am dropping the C dropping the C uh, and she, uh, she she splashes hot coffee in this one woman, woman's face, which ends up scarring her horribly. Not horribly, but pretty badly. Uh, and then she, for whatever reason, decides to pour champagne down a grate, which hits the electrical system, and she ends up shocking herself to death. Uh, and a bunch of people see it, a lot of them potential killers later. And uh, fast forward a little bit. And the industry is gearing up to uh, launch this new model's career. She's going to be the new Alexis Carpenter. And of course, at the same time, a bunch of killings start happening. And you have to question, who's the killer? Is it this old lady? Is it this weird bald guy? Is it uh, the, the, the makeup artist who she permanently scarred? Uh, is it is it Alexis Carpenter him, herself? Is she back from the dead somehow? Um, a bunch of options. A uh, great mask for the killer. There's a great look, just a great, just general great look for the killer. Wonderful look. I love, love, love the killer in this. Uh, and I love the twist. The twist actually surprised me. I was not expecting where the twist was going. It is very giallo to the point where I actually felt like a fucking idiot for not realizing that it must be the twist. Because um, looking back, it's fairly obvious, uh, which I think is it, it it's kind of a great twist when you look back and you're like oh fuck i should have seen that that's great that always puts a smile on my face so that really was nice the big issue people might have with this movie is that it is a very specific style and tone uh it is a little jokey but subtly jokey it's got a very um you know uh sort of dry sense of humor. Uh, the most outrageous gag uh, from my memory is at one point, uh, our one of our characters opens a elevator and inside you get this like close shot of this blind guy and his like white pupils. And, you know, it's that kind of standard issue blind trope that you see in Italian movies a lot. And at first you're like, oh fuck, supernatural. And... No, it's just that he's the security guard who happens to be blind, um, which is an interesting choice. And it's just like one of those like funny macabre moments where you, you might get a chuckle. 
Uh, there's not really a lot of laugh out loud stuff, but there's a lot of chuckle moments. The, the, the filmmaking, the actual production, that's where things might turn people off. This is a very cheap looking movie. Uh, it feels very digital. It feels um, both like the acting, the audio quality, the camera, everything feels like a telenovela. It feels like a soap opera. Except for the music. The music is very in line with the genre they're kind of having fun with. Um, so I really appreciated that. The music is great. Uh, I didn't hear it as well as I probably could have. I had to watch it kind of low because the baby was sleeping. But So because it has this telenovela feel and the audio kind of mm, wavers, it, it definitely... I can see a lot of people turning it off very quickly because it just doesn't feel right. I would suggest giving it like 10, 15 minutes and just kind of try to get used to it because if you get used to it and you actually get kind of on the same wavelength as the filmmakers, it's a whole bucket of fun. Uh, if you can't get on that wavelength, you're probably not going to like it. But if you can, um, it's great. And of course, you know, I mean, I my whole filmmaking career is all based on these very odd uh, uncomfortable decisions, so I, of course, really appreciate what they did here. Uh, but even I, at first, was a little put off until I got used to it. So just know that it is a thing you have to get used to, but if you do, totally worth it. Great film overall. Uh, I did have some other issues. Um, there, the characterization was iffy. You know, I didn't really feel like we had a strong main character, but, I, I you know, as I said, I, I like the twist a lot. I like the atmosphere. I like the uh, way it takes on the giallo genre. Uh, I love the way that it plays with kind of these like Argento references and weird little details. Uh, there, there's a main house in the movie that on the outside is just a model house and it's very obviously a model and it's great. And inside, uh, the windows all have a very Suspiria-esque look to them and they're all these very obviously fake windows. Uh, a lot of set dressing that is uh, well done but very cheap at the same time. And uh, there's even, I think, a reference either to the Birth of Crystal Plumage, Black Christmas, or both. I'm not sure. But either which way, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. It is not perfect, but I would say it's certainly better than Abracadabra and definitely worth your time. So if you're looking to watch something new-ish, uh, if you haven't already watched this, uh, go ahead, get that 30-day free trial on Arrow Player and give it a watch. It's definitely worth it, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased. I, you know, when I heard about this, I was, I was, I was uncertain. You know, it could have gone several different ways. It could have felt like a cheap Shutter knockoff. And while it definitely does have a, a hint of that Shutter feel, um, I think these are uh, streaming services that can certainly uh, exist together. And it's so cheap that why not? So uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, check me out on social medias. Uh, if you feel like going on those hell sites, uh, check out my merch, my merch store that's linked down below. You can get Philip the Vinegar Syndrome or Vinegar Cat. And uh, you can uh, also check me out on Patreon where I uh, love hanging out with my patrons, y'all. So, you know, preferably on AeroPlayer, go watch a movie. <laughs>